Why, hello, everybody. <laughs> Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And just, I hope that you get everything that you deserve for the holiday season. And if you don't celebrate the holidays, I hope that you at least go out and do something absolutely amazing uh, during this time. Because the time that I'm recording this is T-27 minus minutes until... Christmas Eve, which is when I celebrate Christmas with my family. So, what is up, you guys? It's been a hot minute. Your boy Avery here, and if I look this way, uh, I do apologize in advance. Uh, in case you can't tell for whatever reason, if you've been a longtime subscriber, then you would know, uh, this is not my typical background, and if I blink a lot, it's also because I'm exhausted because it's almost 11.30 at night, and I'm very, very tired, but I still wanted to make this video and not even have my phone on me because that's how unprepared I am for this video, um, but I've been meaning to make this all day, and I've just been busy all day. Uh, long story short, um, I completely renovated my room. Uh, I have a completely different set of my beds in a different spot. My desk is at a different spot. This cabinet behind me is my, um, it, like, it's my clothes cabinet and stuff, but it's also like a gaming cabinet, so... Right above me, you can see the PS4. Right next to that, I have my Xbox One. And right next to that, I have my Nintendo Switch all lined up next to each other. Um, I had tile placed down here in my room as um, a Christmas gift from my grandparents to myself, but they don't know that that was what they got me, so we're surprising them as well. So it's kind of a double gift. It's a long story. <laughs> so, but yes, if I'm looking on over here, it's just because I'm making sure I'm in frame. So I still haven't really worked out all the kinks for video creation at this desk yet. I mean, of course, I can just record my voice. Um, but either way, now that all that shit's out of the way, let's get into the real stuff. I wanted to talk to you guys today about the past 10 years of Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm talking, I guess, kind of more like 9 years, or if you want to include 2009, because that's when, like, Teledad was big and all that. But I'm more concerned with, like, 2010 to 2019, since we're going into 2020. And just to sort of reflect back on where I was in my life at that point, and, um kind of where I am now, um, because I never thought back when I started this YouTube channel in 2010, which is when I first started posting videos at my grandparents' house with a shitty 240p webcam. Um, some of those videos are private now, so sorry guys, you won't be able to find it. It's way too cringe. But uh, some of my first videos on this channel were in 2010, nine, almost 10 years ago now, really. Um, and like my voice was high pitched. I hadn't hit puberty yet. I hadn't had all this beard and terrible shaving. Oh my god, I'm gonna turn into a freaking pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> but I, I was so less experienced at the game than I am now. Although, granted, I just scrubbed out at a Kissimmee Regional and I went one and three with fucking Orcus. But that's besides the point. Uh, I lost to bad luck. So we're gonna go with that. I don't wanna talk about it. <laughs> so, um,. But the game has changed so crazy. My life has changed so crazy. You know, I mean, it has been, you know, basically a decade. Um, but to go from when I started this channel in 2010 and I was in eighth grade, I was like 13, 14 at the time, to now I'm 23 years old. I am working the job of my dreams. Uh, I have a uh, public Facebook page now, which is uh, titled First Coast News Avery Latta hyphen, or if you don't know what that is, it's the dash on your keyboard, Reigns. Um, and so I've been gaining somewhat of a decent following on that Facebook page um, now that I work for that particular news company uh, here in Florida and uh, building a name for myself in the Jacksonville, Florida community, sort of the state of Florida as a whole, um, and just doing a lot of things that I never thought in a decade ago that I would have been doing and I also didn't think that the game of Yu-Gi-Oh would be where it is today and I never thought that I would be in a good position with my job to where I'm basically able to take time off I mean for the most part whenever I want um, even though I have to work weekends to go to regionals and go to events and things like that um, it's just such a blessing and it's it's so so cool and it's cool to like look back on also kind of cringy to look back on some of the videos that I made back then and just how bad the quality was and uh, hopefully I am still recording here yes I am but it's gonna probably slow down my computer but that's fine because we are going to look up the ban list now I wanted to bring this up because what was hit is just so weird for 20, I mean, I shouldn't say weird for 2010, but just you look back on the 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list and you think, 
how in the hell did we go from what was banned back then to now? And it's just absolutely crazy. And I don't know why I can't find it now because uh, here we go. This was it. So this was the 2010 ban list from a forum. Cards that are, da, da. yes, so this is the right one. Um, so back on the 2010 Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list, just as a perspective, mind you, what got banned was Substitute because we had Frog FTK in 2010, Rescue Cat, Heavy Storm, and Brain Control. The limited cards were Trishula, Infernity Launcher, Black Whirlwind, Monster Reborn, Dark Hole, Dark Hole is now at 3, and Monster Points back at 1 now. And Roll Oppression was put from 3 to 1 in 2010. Then to Semi-Limited, we had Chaos Sorcerer, which is now at 3. Snipe Hunter, which is now at 3. Uh, MST, which is now at 3. Ojama Trio, which is now at 3. Magic Cylinder, which is also now at 3. And now what moved from no longer restricted um, on this 2010 September list was Black Rose Dragon, Cyber Dragon, Goblin Zombie, Dream War Frog, United We Stand, and Royal Decree. Um... And then it's like you compare that to what we have now and just how the game has evolved so much. Like Night, uh, Nightmare Goblin Band, uh, Agrapane Band, uh, Nightmare Mermaid Band, uh, let's see, Widow Anchors at 1, like all these, Dark Arm Dragons now at 2, like Dark Arm Dragon was at 1 back in 2010. Like the game is just so different now like if you would have told me back in 2010 that we would have a mechanic called link monsters that were these blue cards with arrows that showed you where you could summon monsters from your extra deck too and that we would have a mechanic called pendulum summoning where you could just just drop your pants and dookie all over the board basically it just i mean stuff like that would have blown my mind and I probably would have just thought that you were crazy and thought that the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! would never go that far and make the game bad. Um, and now to have this Master Rule 5 revision that basically takes the game back to 2010 and even earlier, um, you know, I, I think is very interesting and um, nostalgic in a way. And I feel like Konami is trying to do that to definitely pull some... Uh, old players back into the, I guess, what would be considered new Yu-Gi-Oh! or new age of Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, but to, to even think what I was doing back then in 2010, like I was playing Rescue Cat OTK, I had access to Frog FTK, but instead I played Frog Monarch. Uh, I won, one of my first locals that I won was with Frog Monarch, and I remember I beat a very good player who was in the Jacksonville community at the time, and I think he still is. Uh, his name was Arthur, and I remember he was playing Frog FTK, and I beat him with Frog Monarch. And I beat him with Frog Monarch because he summoned Swap Frog and went to go dump uh, like a Rodent Toten, and I used Effect Veiler because Effect Veiler was like one of the only hand traps that we had back then besides DD Crow. Uh, you know, we didn't have Ash or anything like that, which is weird to think. It's, it's weird to even go back and play classic formats that you get without hand traps like Ash Blossom just because we've been so programmed in our minds now to constantly play hand traps, whether it's Ash, Lancia, you name it. Um, but I ended up veiling his Swap Frog and like he tried to use Substitute and like I had an out for it and like I 2 owed him very quickly and I remember I was like really proud of myself and like I said I was like 13, 14 at the time I was not a, that good of a player. Dark Dust Spirit was freaking busted as hell in that deck because you could, you know, use Treeborn Frog, bring it out, uh, still in the standby phase, enemy controller, their monster, bring back out Treeborn Frog since you're still in the standby, sacrifice two monsters for Light and Darkness Dragon, or, you know, bring out Treeborn, main phase one, tribute for Dark Dust, blow away all your monsters, you know, Dark Dust Spirit was the OG topologic bomber dragon, <laughs> and you didn't have to summon to his own, you just played the card. Smack him for 22, banish a frog, get out Rodent Toad, and return Dark Dust to your hand, and then you just had a 2,000 fat-ass booty frog playing a little trumpet sitting on your board that the opponent just couldn't get around. Um, and I remember, God, this is going to make me sound like such an asshole, but I was 13 at the time. I was a douchebag. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. But I remember when I was playing Infernity back in, like, 2010, 2011, maybe 2009. I don't know. But uh, Mist Worm was, like, $60, $70 at the time. And I remember I tried to cheat this guy playing Black Wings by setting Infernities to my back row. And all I had was Archfiend. And I play Archfiend. And 
I end up like going off with combos, making Trishula Mist Worm, and then I still lost, which was the sad part. <laughs> It, it, I was such an asshole, and I know I was, and I know I'm going to be a hate for it, and I'm sorry. I was a punk-ass kid. Like, I really wanted to win at Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and it just made me feel like such a terrible-ass player that your boy lost, even with setting Infernities to his back row. Like, God, it was, it was, a, uh, it was a hell of a ride. Robbie Cole says the ride never ends. That's where my ride ended. <laughs> so, just... To, to look back on the game and to look back at previous formats, I think of formats like Dragon Rulers and Spellbook of Judgment, which was like a plus a million, you know, like just so many pluses off that one card and you got a summon. And back in 2013, the deck was so busted. And then, you know, Infernity ended up winning like our Nationals or Worlds or something after the deck was completely irrelevant and then they blew it out of the water. Um... Like, just the game has been through so many ups and downs and twists and turns throughout these 10 years. Um, and it's so weird to think my life without it. And that's why I'm just so happy that this job has worked out to where um, not only am I working in the news industry and I'm doing what I love, but I also get to play the game that I love that I've been playing since I went to my first locals when I was 12 years old. So 11 years I've been playing this game. I'm a dinosaur in the community. People that I met when I first came into the Yu-Gi-Oh! community, other than one person who I don't even talk to on a regular basis, he was just sort of always there, um, is no longer part of the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Um, and it's it's sad to see those people go. Um, you know, I still keep in contact with some of those people to this day. Um, but, you know, you're, whenever your main connection is a card game that they no longer play, and you know, you don't hang out outside of that, especially when I was just 12, 13 years old and I couldn't drive myself around, you know, there was only so much interaction I could have, you know, once a week on a Saturday or at a regional or whatever. Um, and it's nice, too. That's the other thing, too, that in 2018 and 2019, regionals started coming back to Jacksonville. We didn't have regionals here in Jacksonville for years, so I would have be forced to drive out to Kissimmee three hours away or an hour and a half away if I stayed with my grandparents the night before um, in Daytona. You know, I would be forced to have to drive three hours out to Tallahassee or three hours out to Kissimmee or five hours out to Miami or five hours to Hollywood. I've never been to Hollywood. They just recently started putting regionals there, but just as an example. Um, and it, it sucked. Like, I, I drove five hours to Atlanta for the YCS uh, back in 2015, maybe? I don't remember. It was it was one of the YCSs in Atlanta. And I don't even remember what I was playing. I remember Spellbook Top 32 that because I remember I got footage of that and it got like over 3,000 views. Um, my channel was really blowing up then um, for what small of a channel I had then, and now it's kind of sitting at the 700, 600 mark just because I don't really post anymore. Um, and the friends that I've made in the community just on YouTube, um, Capital G, uh, Robbie Cole, um, you know, people that I've um, come in contact with, more Robbie Cole because I've met him a couple times in person and made that connection and made that friendship, which has been very cool. Um, working alongside Capital G, allowing me to post on his channel some time back was just super, super amazing, especially since he was one of the first YouTubers that I got into back in 2010 and I've been watching him ever since and just watching his channel grow, grow, grow and explode. Unfortunately, becoming a clickbait channel. I'm kidding, Randall. I love you, brother. But... You and your shaved head need to quit clickbaiting shit. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, and on top of that, too, like, I graduated college and I got a badass car. Your boy's driving a Dodge Challenger 2015, 500 fucking horsepower. I never thought at, tw back then I was 22, at 22 years old, I would have a car just dropped in my lap, all paid for. And then I just have to sort of, you know, help pay my part of the insurance along with my parents' two cars. And, you know, just have this blessing. I mean, just everything has been a huge blessing. Um, and to just be in the position that I'm in and to now be starting to build a fan base uh, in Jacksonville um, for being in the news industry. And, uh, you know, of course, there's that stigma of, oh, you know, fake news, fake news. And, you know, we're, we're local news. We're not reporting fake stuff. And that's something that I promised, too, that I wouldn't have that stigma of reporting fake news. Um <laughs> But I just, I, I'm, life is so good, and I, I don't know, I don't know what the future holds, and typically I'm someone that wants to plan for the future, but just looking back on my life these past 10 years, and to think that if I could go back to the past me, who was bullied in junior high and bullied in high school, um, and who didn't really have a whole lot of friends to say, you're going to be living the dream, 
literally the American dream, plus still be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Whether I'm a scrub or not at it, um, that and that life would be so great. I mean, I, I wouldn't believe it. I never would have thought when I was 13 that now I'm 23 and life is, is so good. Um, and I know that this sort of feels like a, a feel-good video and sort of like a, oh, just, you know, ah, oh, you know, just a, one of those type of videos just all over myself. <laughs> but really, at the same t token, though, you know, it also comes back to you, the viewer, because if you hadn't been watching my videos, if you hadn't ever subscribed, um, had you not ever reached out to me um, in the YouTube comments, uh, I would have never made that connection and I maybe would have quit the game. Uh, I never would have been inspired to try different ideas. Um, I never would have been inspired to use different video ideas. Um, I never would have been inspired to even start a YouTube channel. And I started it because, you know, I, th I thought it would be a cool idea. Um, and in fact, it makes me want to re um, revive, uh, resurrect um, something that Robbie Cole had done years ago. And it was called Youth of the Nation's 21 Questions. Um, and so I might do that video um, and kind of, you know, reminisce more and talk about, you know, those questions and things and, you know, tag other YouTubers and see if it can kind of take fire a little bit. Um, but with this video almost being 17 minutes long, I'm tired as hell. It's 1140. It's going to be Christmas Eve in 20 minutes. So your boy gets to open up some presents and get some monies. And uh, I really like the monies because it uh, helps me pay for my Yu-Gi-Oh addiction, which is a lot worse than crack cocaine. So, what do you guys think? How long have you been in the Yu-Gi-Oh community? What is it that you have seen evolve and change um, in the course of this game's lifespan? Uh, you know, did you start when the game first came out? I would love to know all that more in the comments below. I know I don't really post a lot, but when I do, I really like to have that interaction. I like to have, you know, um, or really see who it is in my fan base that's still kind of here, you know, checking in from time to time. I love seeing that, and I, I wish I could post more. I just, you know, with, with life being so busy, I know that YouTube is sort of, you know, dead for me. Um, but I do like to sort of post videos from time to time and just kind of give my thoughts on things. Um, also, if you're wondering my thoughts on the uh, revision uh, to the Master Rule, I think it's good, but I also think it's bad. I think a lot of decks that were rogue are going to come up to Tier 2 status. A lot of decks are going to be really tier two good now um and also fuck fuck all the players that are going to be coming out here going dark law bahamut shark are totally awesome i don't miss that one damn bit and don't tell me to use an abiru because with my lucky ass i'll never open it and i'll never see it thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next video